Hello. Thank you for joining us in this special time of studying God's Word. This presentation of God's Word is brought to you by the Waverly Church of Christ. Our address is 438 West Main Street, Waverly, Tennessee, zip code 37185. Please contact us at 931-296-3213 if you have any questions, would like to receive free Bible study material, or have a need we might be able to help with. It is our prayer that God will bless you in this study. God created us to be loved by Him and to love Him, to manage His creation, to do good things, and to enjoy life, glorifying Him by all we do. In John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they, the sheep of verses 7 and 8, may have life and have it abundantly. We are the sheep. To live the maximum life is to live by a specific value system. To determine if we are living by the correct value system, we need to take a serious look into our hearts and see if God's place in our lives is a matter of convenience or commitment. Ask yourself two questions. What are my values And is my life consistent with what I say is most important? Solomon said in Proverbs 4 verse 23, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Solomon is saying the heart is like the control room of life. The heart determines the direction of our lives. If all systems are properly functioning, our life will go in the right direction. The wrong systems lead to malfunctions and even disaster. Values determine our direction. Without direction, people are tossed to and fro. Many people have no idea what their values truly are. They might become like the double-minded and frustrated man described in James chapter 1 and verse 8, unstable in all his ways. The internal conflict of a double-minded man comes with conflicting values. Incongruent values build stress because they challenge us to decide what we value most. What do you want now versus what do you want most The best value is to choose what you want most over what you want now and live consistently to it. Added to the difficulty of maturing properly is learning to care about righteous things with a proper perspective and balance. Balance is the key. There must be a way to balance work and family or we will not have the funds to support our family. Problems will come if we value either to an extreme. But where does God fit in the scenery picture of our life? Is he the main tree in the front or the pond in the background? Is he the well-placed bird in the air, the bridge over the creek, or is he the very frame around the whole picture? Or is he the very easel holding it up? How does our behavior show that we show what we value most? How does our budget reflect what we value? How does our schedule reflect what we value? Every decision we make is based upon what we value most at the moment of decision. While we are not perfect, God's plan is is. So the question is, do we follow a consistent value system in our decision making? The presence of sin in this world and in our hearts makes our effort to live the abundant life more challenging. But that is more reason to embrace God's life-giving truth and pursue righteousness. 
For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus said, Matthew 16, verse 25. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, are the instructions of Matthew 6, verse 33. We will find our lives when we immerse our lives in Christ. Values determine our destiny. If our values determine the direction of our life, then they also assure where we are going to end up. Jesus asked in Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We give our lives to what we value. We are giving our priceless souls to what we think is important. In consideration of the end, we must consider the beginning. Where do we get our values? We cannot just say by experiences because two people can learn different lessons from the same experience. We cannot just say our personalities lest morality is reduced to mere preference. Any value we currently hold has its origin either from Christ or from culture. The two core value systems to choose from are the word of truth or the world of sin. Remember, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Matthew 6, verse 24. It is easy to determine what Christ's values are if we get to know this book. The divine nature of this word becomes more evident the more we read it. What also becomes clear is why it is so despised by those who live according to the contrasting value system. Humility admits God's way is best and seeks his blessings, but pride fuels rejection and solicits consequence. God has a life system designed to enjoy all the good things he made. Prideful culture values themselves more than God and problems keep coming. Our culture values pleasure. Pleasure is incredibly profitable because we are a very sensual society. Pleasure is a value that the world proposes but is short-lived as best. It will perish with this world. So it is foolish to lose our life in what will not last. Our pleasure needs to be in knowing Christ. Our culture values possessions. Americans behave like they think happiness can be purchased. If we believe that our worth is reflected by what we have, we will wrong, be wrongfully motivated to buy the best and have the most. But Jesus said, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed. For not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. Luke 12 verse 15. Our identity needs to be in Christ. Our culture values power or prestige or position. There is no sin in these things, but they become sin for those fueled by pride. Pride is not only short-sighted and foolish, but also the common denominator in all sin. Our power, prestige, and position should be used for God's glory, not our own. Christ has a different value system that includes the same things but in proper perspective and balance leading to a better destiny. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 reads, Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, 
The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world values the cravings of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. God says, invest your life in what comes from me. Proverbs 21 verse 21 informs, He who pursues righteousness and loyalty finds life, righteousness, and honor. If we will value the right things, God will give us the things the world craves. How can we build our life on right and lasting values? Would we be surprised if it were as easy as ABC? A stands for assess. Job 34 verse 4 reads, Let us choose for ourselves what is right. Let us know among ourselves what is good. Elihu invited Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, and Job to join him in a mutual search for justice or right and good. It's a rhetorical device that God himself used in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. Both are teaching us that we need to decide what is most important in our life. If we do not get clear about this decision, we will not only be stressed from those incongruent values, but perhaps even lost. If faithfulness to a biblical value system and becoming what God wants us to be is what we truly value, then our life heads in that direction and is filled with joy no matter what. In other words, success is living out God's values. Set values now and you will avoid a great deal of pain and minimize the rest. So assess what is important. B stands for bail out of what is unimportant. Some things are taking up too much time when others need our good deeds. Psalm 119 verse 37 requests, Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your, way, in your ways. Uh, the wording from the English Standard Version. Life is too important to waste. Junk and distractions should not fill our time. Be mindful of how time is used. Some would be amazed at how much time is wasted. Even busy people are wasting hours because they are not spending them on the most important things. The Apostle Paul knew how to maximize his time because he knew his values. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Let the most important things bail us out of unimportant things. C stands for confess Christ as most important. Colossians 3 verse 1, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 1 Corinthians 13 focuses on God's love and our love for one another because love is eternal. Love is of God. One thing of real meaning is faith working through love. Galatians 5 and verse 6. Lasting success is built on values that last. As we evaluate our life's direction, remember Matthew 16 verse 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Paul established in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If we value Christ, the outcome is eternal life. But what if we value anything else? If to live is money, then to die is to lose it all. If to live is pleasure, then to die is to no longer experience that pleasure. 
If to live is power, then to die is to have none. The only way death can be a tremendous eternal gain is if we are seeking the righteousness of Christ all alone. For Jesus to be our Savior, he must be our Lord. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Christ the Lord was born a Savior, Luke 2 verse 11. Some believed him when they heard him preaching and said, We know that this one is indeed the Savior of the world, John 4 verse 42. God exalted him to his right hand as a prince and a savior to grant repentance and forgiveness of sins, says Acts 5 verse 31. To make Jesus Lord of our life, we must come to God through faith in Christ Jesus and be baptized into Christ, Galatians 3 verses 26 and 27. Christ is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body, Ephesians 5 verse 23. Thus, the Christians, those in the church, their citizenship is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3 verse 20. Christians now look for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, Titus 2 verse 13. What are your values? Is your life consistent with what you say is most important. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we love you so much. And we are thankful for your love for us. We're thankful that you have not left us to our own devices and to our own means of trying to figure out how to live life and what truly satisfies, but that you have given us your word by which you tell us what is most important. And you tell us how we ought to live life and how that we can have the abundant life. We're thankful for it. We're thankful for just how wonderful you are, the great love that you have, the long-suffering and mercy that you show toward us, and the grace that you continue to shower upon us. We ask that you continue to help us to grow and be strengthened in the inner man, to continue to have the love that we ought to have for one another and especially the love we ought to have for you. We ask that you continue to fill us with all of your fullness, to fill us and to fill our hearts and minds with the values that are most important and values that will lead us to have a strong relationship with you and have that hope of eternal life. And Father, we ask your help that as we navigate difficult days and we navigate the difficulties of this life, that we will put our constant trust in you. Lead us to the day of judgment the day in which we request of you that we may be found faithful and that you will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant, not because of what we have done, but because of our obedience to your will by which the blood of your Son and our Savior covers us. We ask that you continue to be with us, watching over us, keeping us well in health, nursing those who are sick back to health if it is your will, comforting those who are grieving over the loss of loved ones, and assisting everyone with their needs. Help us to be your hands and feet to carry out your work here upon the earth. In the name of Christ, we request and ask these things of you. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in this study. We appreciate your participation. To find other content, you may visit waverlychurchofchrist.org. Search for us on YouTube or Facebook at Waverly Church of Christ. If you have children, 
Search for Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family Ministry on Facebook or Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family on YouTube. You may listen on the radio AM 1060 FM 93.5 on Sundays at 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. You may watch us on television, the local cable channel 3, on Sundays at 1 p.m. Thank you and have a great day.